Stay where I'm at. Intake one deep breath in. Exhale. You good? Yeah. Okay. My mama is a firecracker. My mother is amazing. My mom can sing like nobody's business. She is who she is, and because of who she is, I am who I am, the good and the bad. Like most black women, I would say that the women in my family are complicated. All our mamas, all our grandmothers, our aunts, all they were trying to do was survive. Take no stuff kind of women, but they also knew how to hold a family together. You don't know from hard. She knows all the hard. The joke amongst the grandchildren is to try to get grandma to say, I love you. <laughs> so you know how most black people who ain't from New Orleans, they got that praying grandmother, and they got that cookie baking grandmama? Not me. One bed horses, and one had 11 husbands. <laughs> Anything that I want to be in the world, I can't be that if I'm not willing to wrestle with my own demons and overcome them. I think that black women often aren't exposed to the idea that healing is possible. We have to call the names of the people that have brought us to this point. I am Brittany, daughter of Debbie. I'm the daughter of Antoinette. Great, great granddaughter of Willie Mae. <laughs> Who is the daughter of Ruth. And it's our responsibility to make sure that our people are not invisible. There are women like that in the world, the rememberers. And as long as you remember one thing, everything can continue. Mm -hmm. What's poppin' everybody? Welcome to Friday Nights Live with Rocky Harris, a special taping. Today we have an amazing guest for you guys as always. She is a curator, author, filmmaker, writer, social entrepreneur, and a priest of Shango. She'll also be getting her feature film debut with her upcoming documentary feature, In Our Mother's Garden. Please everyone welcome Chantrell P. Lewis. <laughs> First and foremost, how are you, Chantrell? Congratulations on everything. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm uh, feeling blessed and highly favored and excited and uh, just overwhelmed by like everyone's response about the film. Absolutely. Um, I always like to start off by asking, we're in a quarantine right now, so some people hate it, some people love it. What would you say you love the least and the love the most about being in quarantine? <laughs> In all honesty, it's hard because I feel like it's a complaint. So, you know, I was one of those people who were not quarantined alone. So mm -hmm. it's four of us in the house, myself, my husband, and my two beautiful bonus kids. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, that was like, I'm I'm the loudest one in the house <laughs> and I'm always on the phone. So, it's, you know, like I like my privacy and everything. So that might've been the biggest um, challenge, but it's also been the biggest like blessing because, um, one, you know, both my husband Tony and I are both kind of like anti-social extroverts. So we're like, oh, good, we get to stay home. It's like, you know, Maj uh, Elsa Majimbo from Kenya. She's like, oh, it's quarantine, can't come out. You know, it's a pandemic, that's us. So just being able to spend time with each other because um, I'm always on the road. So I've just been able to enjoy that as well and spending time with the kids too. Absolutely, I'm surprised you said you're an anti-social. I mean, I guess I see that because Gemini's kind of are. Gemini's, like Kendrick Lamar says it best, right? Mm -hmm. Like, yes, I can be super, like, I'm, I mean, like, when I'm on, I'm on and I don't feel like being bothered. It's like, I could be in a room full of people, and, like, I'm in a corner, I'm like, sleep at the club, you know, <laughs> that's me. So I'm the flaky one. Like, my friends are like, are you coming out? I'm like, yeah, girl, uh -huh. oh. And now sometimes I pray that they're gonna actually cancel on me. I'll be like, yes, that juju works. No, I, I, I totally feel you. I know you love Aries, but, uh, um, you know, as a fellow Aries, I, I really happy, happy belated. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so in our mother's garden, um, beautiful. I can't wait to see it. Um, what was your inspiration and why this as your first feature film debut? Yeah. Um, I think my, you know, always inspired by, uh, origin stories of people starting with my own, you know, like I, am a Lukumi Shango priest. Ancestor veneration is um, is uh, central to our religion. We call out the names, we say our majubas, we call out the names of our ancestors. 
Um, and, you know, in my family, my dad always made sure that I knew my people. I knew their stories. He talked about my great grandfather who came over from Jamaica and who he said I sounded like. He said, you know, he, I had a nose like my great grandfather. So he would tell me stories about him. Um, he made me write out my family tree. Mm -hmm. And so like even genealogy, like I've been able to trace my family back to um, the 1700s to Haiti. I was uh, a girl, cause I found out that you related, you're royalty. That is crazy. King Henri Christophe, yes, is one of my ancestors, you know? And so my great grandfather in 1945 was writing think pieces about Mussolini and Italy trying to invade Ethiopia. And so storytelling, you know, being a cultural critic, it's in my blood. You know, my great aunt also did that. And so um, I think right now, uh, it's important to tell stories about the diaspora. I feel like social media has made it possible that, you know, if like we don't stay in our bubbles. And I think the events of last year saw on a global scale, like Black Lives Matter, you know, has been around for years, but like, it was like really a, like a huge global rallying cry in every corner of the earth, whether it was in Nigeria to end the SARS movement, the anti-police violence and murders in South Africa, to the anti Swarte Peep movement uh, in, in, in the Netherlands. Like, you know, there's been like, you know, all of these global uprisings and it's like, we are nuanced, you know, we're unique in our different corners of the globe, but then we're, there's so many similarities, like we're also the same. And so I think that was important. The idea of calling our ancestors name and the resurgence of African spirituality was important. We see a lot of millennials, you know, into like hoodoo and the reclamation of, um, you know, ATRs, the African traditional religions. And then just the healing, like, I mean, over the past few weeks along, I've seen so many things online and Twitter, like black people, like really going, you know, after like other black folks. And it's like, damn, but don't we have enough like shit to contend with as a people and dealing with white supremacy? And it's like, now we gotta be fighting each other as well. And it's like, we're almost imploding. It's like I say, you know, the idea of crabs in a barrel, people talk about that, but it's like, crabs were never meant to be in a barrel. It's not a natural, like a natural habitat. Mm -hmm. So the white supremacy is the barrel. And so it's like, what happens when, you know, we're dealing with the microaggressions and white supremacy and you know, uh, discrimination in terms of housing and student loans and, you know, food scarcity, all of these different things like compounded, 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 like then we turn in on ourselves. And so I think, you know, healing black women are the crux of the black family and the black community. And until we heal and unpack our shit with our mothers and our grandmothers and our caretakers, I don't know if that will ever be right as a people. And so I thought that, you know, the time was now to, you know, to, to share this story in like a major way. I was going to say, was this a nod to Alice Walker's In Search of Our... Of course. Hmm. Absolutely. Like, I mean, you know, Alice Walker to Julie Dash and Daughters of the Dust, you know, um, to, you know, Eve's Bayou, like all of these, hmm. you know, Black women, bell hooks, like all these Black women who have been in the narrative, Zora Neale Hurston, you know, who's my former, you know, like my, my fellow uh, 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 Howardite, you know, Toni Morrison, another fellow Howardite, you know, Howard is a mafia, um, <laughs> is, you know, is all of these black women who came before me, Octavia Butler, um, Gloria Naylor, who had stories to tell. And, but absolutely starting with Alice Walker, because it was Alice Walker that really unpacked you know, not only the storytelling, like when she thought about her mother, like there was a, in, in Search of Our Mother's Gardens, there's a, uh, one of the chapters where she talks about spending time with her mama and her mama talking about some caretaker, you know, some woman's house that she was having to clean and the woman was like real nasty with her. And then she talks about how the woman gets older and she's like decrepit and, you know, bent over and her mom has this twinkle in her eye. She's like, wait, did my mama who do that lady? You know what I mean? And so she sees her in a different light. And so, um, you know, it absolutely was a nod. And even her own, you know, relationship between her and her daughter, Rebecca, you know, like that relationship. Um, uh, I think that it was um, important to uh, to look at, look towards these women who've been telling these stories and to like unpack some of this work now as we're talking about self-care in healing, in air quotes, like what does it mean to really embody that and to do that work 
um, as women. No, I love that. Um, you have some amazing women that are going to be in the stock, uh, Toronto Burke, professors. How did you get these women to sign on? My friends, <laughs> you know, like, Tarana is one of my closest friends for like, I mean, maybe almost like 15 years now. Mm -hmm. Brittany Cooper and I went to Howard together. She talks about latex parties that we were throwing the Louisiana club, you know, when I was president of the Louisiana club. Teresa and I went to Howard together. You know, she's best friends with one of my line sisters. I mm -hmm. mean, Dr. Mother Moreno Vega is my former boss and one of my mentors. I traveled to Cuba t with her twice. Mama Coco, the star, you know, is, um, one of my elder god sisters and one of my former professors at Temple, you know, everyone from like Erica Sewell and um, Desiree Gard, we've been knowing each other since Malcolm X grassroots movement, my friend Delphine Fawundu. So I, I didn't have to go far, I just could go right, you know, in my speed dial. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm telling stories about, um, you know, black women and our mothers. And, you know, I was very intentional also about representation, like making sure that it wasn't just an African-American story or a U.S. African-American story. Like, what is the perspective of people from the Caribbean? What's the Afro-Latina perspective? If I could have gotten a black British woman, I would have done that, right? You know, somebody from the Netherlands, I would have done that. And so I wanted to make sure that whether there was a black woman in Europe, a black woman in the UK, a black woman in Canada or Brazil, that they could see themselves inside of the narratives that were being um, shared by these women. Um what is something that you want people to take away from in our mother's gardens? Um, is it something, do you want it kind of to embody exactly what Alice had started? Or is it, is there another level of the conversation that you're trying to have um, start? I think it's like taking, like, it's like a, 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 a moving, like beyond where she left off, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it's that what Tarana says is, that a lot of us don't know that joy is possible and healing is possible, right? And so being able to like sit with our mothers and have those conversations and having them really to listen, you know, giving them compassion and grace and to listen to their stories and to unpack and do the messy, ugly, sloppy work of unpacking it. I, I remember I, I, I just recently I went home after some drama, you know, with my family and you know, my mom was like all hugs and kiki and ha huh? And I'm like, girl, we need to talk. And she was like, Ugh. I was like, are, are we 12? You know, like she was not trying to talk. And I, I, we had to sit there and unpack some shit. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, in it, I, and I got to hear stuff that I never heard before. And so that allowed me to, um, to even get as a survivor of sexual abuse myself to get to a deeper level of healing for my own self. And so that's something that I think is important. I think it's important for us to call our ancestors names. Mm -hmm. You know, every culture does that besides us. Mama Coco says in the film, you know, you know, we, the problem is we, we, we call out the names of their ancestors, you know, uh, every other day. And so, but we're not calling out the names of our ancestors. And so I want us to get back to that type of tradition. Um, and, and like do the genealogy. When you say call out their names, for people who may not understand that, is that just when someone is passing away? What does that mean? Every day, mm -hmm. I pour libations to my, I give my grandmother coffee, I give her her liquor. Gladys was a drinking woman. Gladys drank VO. She gets her VO, she gets her coffee, she gets her food, I put that down. You know what I mean? And I I tap my egg on stick and I call out their names, I talk to them, I pray to them. You know, uh, they're the closest thing to me, they are God, you know what I mean? Like. They are, that is my connection to and through God. Is They're my angels. They're my, my guardian spirits. And so it is like literally caught out the name. It's learning their stories. It's like erecting an ancestor altar, putting a, a picture up, a glass of water, a, a white candle, and just, you know, meditating and praying. And when you're going through struggles, like, you know, whether it's like with someone in your family who's an addict or, you know, you're having your own personal struggles, like lean on them, like help me get through this, right? do the genealogy work or find out who they were. Oftentimes we're told as a people because we were enslaved, because we we're on plantations, we don't know our history. That's not true. There's so many geneal genealogical societies that exist and so many resources that exist on a website for the film that's there to like help people really excavate their stories. And once you start calling their names, they're like, oh child, I got a story to tell. You know what I mean? They show up in our lives. So that's what it looks like for me. It does, you don't have to be in Lukumi or Santeria or 
hoodoo or a uh, voodoo, um, you know, uh, in a traditional priest or go through an initiation. You don't have to do all that. Just call their names, put their pictures up, light a candle, you know, say, we remember you. You know, these are the things that you like in your, in your, you, this kind of food. You bake your, your, uh, your, um, peach cobbler, I'm gonna bake it just like the way you like it. I cook my grandmother's pancakes from scratch on Sundays. Mm -hmm. That's how I venerate her, you know? And and ask for, in, in order for my life to be good, for it to be healthy, for it to be whole. Absolutely. No, I, and it's so crazy, because again, I've heard people say that, but I've never thought about the depth of it and what it means and how spiritually it can help you. Um, one thing that I just want to give you a shout out for is your Instagram, like your social media, it was so fun researching you and learning about you because I learned so much. And I was a person who um, did African studies in college as well. I'm a Greek sister. We're not a part of the same organization, but we- Which, 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 which one are you a member of? Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority and I, I, <laughs> You see my pink chair? And my friend Erica in the film, who was also an EP, she is one of your soror, so I got mad love for y'all. No, it's insane. If you a black woman trying to make it in this life, that's all I care about. That's, that's, a, that's the greatest sorority, right? Right, exactly, exactly. And I, like I said, your Instagram page alone, for the people who do not follow Chantrell, please follow her and get, get just, get enlightened. Because seriously, like, no matter what post you had, even though you had like long captions, but I literally would go- My friends make fun of me about that. <laughs> no, but like, it was just, again, a lot of social media is is just nonsense. So right. when you look at someone's page and they're giving you something that's fulfilling like that, for me as a black woman, I I immediately hit follow. Cause I was like, I mean, aside from interviewing you, but I just, again, I love seeing black women who are just amazing one, but great at what they do. And they know how to bring it back to their people. That's very, very big for me. So I, again, uh, moving on into um, a special segment that I have is just random questions with Rocky. So these are all okay. questions. Um, so first and foremost, why not King or Queen in instead of Kang? Why? What's the significance of Kang for you? So as I, you know, mentioned, but then that's really going in depth about. I am uh, a crowned, which means initiated Shango priest, Kawo Kabiosile, and so in the Yoruba tradition, which comes from Nigeria and is found in. Uh, Cuba and Brazil and Puerto Rico and Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Shango is the, the the god of thunder and lightning, right? Mm -hmm. And so he's like this extra macho bravado, you know, lover. He has three wives, Oshun, Oya, and Oba. He's a dancer and he was actually a king in the Oyo Empire in Nigeria. And I'm a woman who is a Shango priest. And I remember when I found out that I was gonna be like, you know, I got, it's called getting your hair marks. And I was like crying. My godmother was looking at me like I was crazy. And I was like, you know, I've always been so loud. I always gotta humble myself. And now I'm gonna be a woman as a Shango is too much. So, but that's why, I, that's what the King reference is from or the King reference. And, you know, I think the more we talk about duality, cause in African spirituality, there's duality. Mm -hmm. between the sacred feminine and the sacred, um, uh, the divine um, masculine, and also the fluidity of gender. Um, like Sean Go has, he's very ma extra masculine, but if you look at his statues and like African art, you know, books, textbooks, he has breasts because he said that he rode into battle wearing his wife's clothes. And mm -hmm. so I think that that fluidity, talking about that also, I was always a tomboy, like very masculine of centered girl. And so I think that um, creates more inclusivity and open space up for us to like um, talk about gender fluid, fluidity and um, sexuality in our community as well. Absolutely. Um, in one of your IG posts, you write, if you surrender to the wind, you can ride it, which is a Toni Morrison quote. Um, when was a time where you had to surrender to the wind in order to get, you know, move forward? Sure doing this film. <laughs> I feel you, I feel you. In what way, what was it, when was there a struggle for you while making the film? Throughout the whole entire process, mm -hmm. you know, contending with a lot, you know, you know, whether it's like, oh, do I tell this story? Do I go here? How are people going to feel? Doing things, you know, my way, like really being committed to like my vision for the film, like, uh, it, the entire thing has been about riding to the wind and like, you know, and not struggling. And then also even putting my, I didn't want to put myself in the film, but then when it came to a point where I had to, you know, it was also a part of the, um, of the me surrendering to the wind, you know what I mean? Instead of like fighting it, I was like, you know, oh, I kind of got to put myself in. I kind of got to tell my story with my mama, 
kind of got to do this ugly work of being vulnerable um, before all of these people and then reckon with whatever will come from that. You know what I mean? And so in this very moment, you know, I'm still riding the wind, you know what I'm saying? Because the wind is, that's the only thing that's constant, change, you know? And then Yoruba spirituality, oh yeah, represents um, change in our lives. And it's like, you know, she is the storm. And so instead of, you know, uh, fighting it, it's like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to ride, ride, ride those winds of change. Absolutely. Um, I have two last questions. Um, so this next one is all about Gemini's. So which of these uh, Gemini qualities do you resonate with the most? So the mm -hmm. first one is professional ghoster. Second one is chatty patty. Sec or third one is intellectually curious. And then the fourth one is can't stay still. Ooh, that's hard. What's the, tell me more about the ghosting. Tell me more about the ghosting. Okay, because I have a lot of Gemini friends and y'all will be super social, super out there, want to text all day. And then out of nowhere, y'all be like, okay, this is too much for me and I just got to go. And you- I don't want to be bothered. I just don't want to be bothered. You didn't even do nothing to me. I'm just over it. Number one, I'm two, three text messages and I'm done. Like there's no more text. You want to talk to me? We can talk on the phone. But I'm like two, three. You're not gonna hear from me. No, there's no more texting. Um, so I can be moody. I'm hyper flaky. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to change my mind. I, you know, I reserve the right to change my mind any given second. Tony will be like, you know, you just change your mind like three or four times, right? I, I reserve the right to do that. But I would say um, the last it was intellectually curious and uh, can't keep still. Mm -hmm. Well, you see the books. I got a thousand books. So I, I, it will be a toss up between those two. Okay. It's like the can't keep still. I mean, like pre COVID, I was probably out, traveling outside of the country like nine times a year. So can't keep still and the intellectually curious. Okay. I've loved I'm it. Like, Safe, sapiosexual to like, that's the way to my heart. Like, you know, mm. that's how your boy got me. It was that, that, that smooth talking in my DMs that got me that, that talk. You know what I mean? You used to talk to me nice. You were saying the right the right things, telling me about my work. You wasn't like, ooh, baby, you so fine. You was like, oh, your projects are dope. Boom. Hmm. Holla at your girl. Okay. No, really. It's it's you, we need filling, things that are filling, fulfilling. Right. Um, last question is what do you love the most about being a black woman? Oh shit. Um, besides being from New Orleans, a black woman from New Orleans. <laughs> we can do I love I love the way that I could like do anything with my hair. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I love the way that my blackness, like my melanin, actually gives me access as a passport into Port-au-Prince, mm -hmm. into Soweto, into you know Cuba, into Havana, into Salvador de Bahia, into Paramibo, in in Suriname, like into Jamaica. Like I could go around with this black skin anywhere in the world, right? particularly in black dominated spaces mm -hmm. and, and find myself at home. I mm -hmm. think that's the most beautiful part. It's like my melanin is like, it gives me automatic kinship and my, my accent too. So even though my accent is different from other people, there's an authenticity about it that makes people feel like they could trust me. Like this chick is is honest. She, whatever she's coming with is authentic and it's, um, it's true. And so it's that that yeah. I love. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much again. Congratulations. Um, thank you, Rocky. No, thank you. I appreciate you making the time. Even Like, regardless, I was going to make time. We was going to have to go over time. If I was going to be working and doing the interview at the same time, we was going to do it. Um, so In Our Mother's Garden comes out on Netflix May 6th, just in time for Mother's Day. Uh, thank you so much, Chantrell. It's really been a pleasure, and I hope nothing more but the best comes forward. Blessings. Thank you. Thank you so much. Make them rain. Okay, exactly. <laughs>